Lord of the Rings is back as Embracer Group and Warner Brothers announced that they will be making new movies. Signing a multi-year deal, even after making the original two trilogies, Tolkien's universe is still largely unexplored, and it gives them the opportunity to invite fans deeper into a cinematic world of Middle-earth. And we are honoured and excited to be partnering with Embracer on this new adventure. It's all fanciful and flowery, but it has provoked mixed responses from the people at home. Everything from critical drinkers if they put Peter Jackson in charge, this could blow rings of power out of the water, to others despairing that Hollywood simply has no new ideas. Or the independent asking why can't franchises just die anymore? <laughs> or there's mine, where I don't hold out much hope until we have something concrete. And even if they do get Peter Jackson involved, I don't think he'll be able to make something that he could have in 2001, because he'll be working in an entirely different landscape, and I think I've got the examples to prove the effect that that will have on any creation. Handcuffing creativity and require him to jump through several loopholes just to even get close to where he could have been in the first place. But it wasn't just Warner Brothers that spoke about this new deal, as they talked about the fast, complex, and dazzling universe dreamt up by Tolkien. We also had a CEO from Embracer Group, talk about how we understand how cherished these Tolkien works are, and we plan to honour the past, but look towards the future and adhere to the strongest levels of quality and production values. I don't know, what does look towards the future remind you of? It really sounds like making something for a modern audience to me. Now, I do think this quote essentially rules out a remake of the original trilogies. You would assume that honouring the past means that we will leave that there and not contradict it. And in the most optimistic outlook, looking towards the future simply means building on what came before. And this could be everything ranging from making a movie about an entirely different book, or trying to create some kind of Aragorn universe where you break off all of the separate characters and do your own MCU of Tolkien. <laughs> and let's face it, they'd probably love to do that if they thought they could get away with it. Whether they'll have the gall to try is a different question though. Now some good news on the hope and optimism front does come from Jackson himself, where he says that Warner Brothers and Embracer have kept us in the loop every step of the way, and we look forward to speaking with them further to hear their vision for the franchise moving forwards. So it at least shows that they appreciate them as part of the original movies, and whether they'll actually get involved or not, we don't know. But it's not like they've cut them out and ghosted them, and just assume, no, we can do this all in-house. We don't even have to bother with the legacy of the previous movies at all. Although it does have to be said that Rings of Power did something similar initially. Amazon did speak about working with them initially, although Jackson said he'd wait for a script before he decided. Although that was the last that happened, and they never heard back from them when the scripts were actually made. And as far as we know, the scripts for these movies don't exist either, so Jackson's in a very similar position now as he was with Rings of Power at one time. So it's probably best to reserve judgment about Jackson being involved for the time being. Not that that's actually stopped people getting excited for the show, oh no. Warner Brothers just destroyed Rings of Power. Could this have destroyed the future of Rings of Power? Asks Screen Rant, who are the same people who thought that Amazon's prequel show is a worthy Lord of the Rings successor. I have to say, if you believe that Rings of Power is a worthy Lord of the Rings successor, how come you think that just an announcement of a movie has already destroyed the series? Seems like you're not so confident in your words as you were uh, pretended at the time. But they say that if Warner Brothers wants to take advantage of the success and fame of Lord of the Rings franchise, it may affect the future success of Amazon Rings of Power, because these two will likely be in direct competition. Which is odd, because they shouldn't be. If both of them were actually good, then one would only enhance the other one. People would be desperate for more content. It's only when one of the products is bad do you come up with an us versus them scenario. And you could find out that Rings of Power is actively harming the reputation of the IP itself when it comes to the success of Warner Brothers movies. And it's worse than that because the impact will go onto Warner Brothers themselves within the studio. And if they're under the impression that Rings of Power is an amazing success and what people want, then it could actually push them in a direction of replicating what Rings of Power has actually done. This is where the whole perception equals reality comes in. It doesn't matter if everybody hates Rings of Power. If Amazon have got the statistics and the analytics to try and fake a world where it was a major success, then it could be that data that Warner Brothers could use internally as well to push an idea that this is what Lord of the Rings need to be, because it's already been proven to be a success over there. Now, if Peter Jackson was on board, he could go to bat against this, because he had a great attitude with regards to the original movies. Did you have some kind of mechanism, in a sense, so that you could make sure that you were true to Tolkien? We had no interest in putting our messages in, <laughs> into this movie, but we thought that we should honour Tolkien by putting his messages into it, make sure that what he cared about ends up in the movie. But we live in a very different time now, where companies have had two decades to fill their ranks with people who entirely disagree with that point of view. And so even if Peter Jackson is involved, 
there's no saying that his voice will be able to carry the same weight as it did way back in 2001, simply because of the weight of the voices of new departments which have been set up since then. These are the same departments and voices that come out with things like attacking the fans. Oh, the problem isn't us, it's definitely the paying customer. I mean, we only felt it natural that Tolkien's work would reflect the world that we actually live in. Tolkien is for everyone, and we need to leave the isolation of our own cultures and come together alongside a Tolkien scholar, saying who are these people that feel so threatened or disgusted by the idea that we would change the law. There's a prevailing attitude in current day that if you actually want to respect law, respect the world, respect the thematic universe, then there's something wrong with you. And this is an attitude that, although it was around in 2001, it didn't have the same weight and people could still fight against it. But that argument seems to be largely lost now if you just look at generic Western entertainment. There's a reason why if you look at any of the series that I've watched for personal enjoyment recently, None of them speak English, because it's this attitude which is spread through Western companies which makes it impossible for them to create good adaptations inside a consistent world, because they have lost the ability to understand why a consistent world matters in the first place. And I think it's the awareness of this change in Hollywood which has led to the lack of confidence customers have in them anymore. Just the sheer announcement that this was happening led fans to despair. Just let them rest in paradise. A Bloomberg reporter complained that nobody has new ideas, but I'm not sure it's returning to the same franchise that people are even complaining about. Lord of the Rings is a massive universe, there are plenty of stories and ways you could tell the stories that would be entirely original and you've never seen before. Lack of potential is not a problem that the universe has. I think this attitude more comes down to the fact that we don't trust you with these franchises anymore. And it's very much a not in my backyard kind of plea. It's like, please just stop going this, I'm fed up with you destroying it. Can't you just go over there and destroy something else? Hopefully the next franchise you destroy won't be one I actually care about. This is why we have, as a person who loves Lord of the Rings, I don't think we should make any more movies. We had a good thing going, but you just had to blow it up. Or will you please not just leave the series alone? Most entertainment industries would look at this fan response and think, well, something's got to change. They would analyze what they're doing that makes people upset at the sheer fact that you're telling them they're going to get more stuff, but not Hollywood. To Hollywood, they just write off the fans as the actual problem. Rather than asking why, just by my very presence and the possibility that I will make something, people are asking, why can't my franchise just die? They can't put their finger on why. They can't put into words exactly what the problem is which is making them feel this way. What they do know is that there are some franchises where no one would turn down a sequel, but others feel like The Walking Dead, where no one particularly feels compelled to see it anyway. Why people feel like franchises are being run into the ground. I don't think there's any universe which is limited to a few stories. We've seen with TV series renewed for nine and ten seasons. They can keep expanding the world, going into new areas, finding new arcs to tell, and all of that goes on for far more hours than a movie does. Making ten movies out of a universe should be easy. Stargate SG-1 managed to expand their universe consistently. It's not lack of potential which is driving IPs into the ground. It's not something being long in the tooth that makes the audience not feel compelled to see it. If the quality is good, people will continue to go on and on and on. The MCU just makes you say, oh no, not another one. Not because of superheroes, because you're not making good superhero movies. Stargate SG-1 managed to expand the universe while making it all feel consistent. The universe fit together. It was a specific place with its own law and people. Didn't come in, have someone look at it and go, this is disgusting, I think we need to remake this in an entirely new image for my values. That's why people are saying things like, we get it, you hate Tolkien, because people understand that the values that Tolkien had that Jackson wanted to put into the original movies are antithetical to current day Hollywood, let alone the reason, the impetus behind Warner Brothers wanting to do this now. It's not because they suddenly had this grand desire to return back to Tolkien, they'd read the books and just had this fire within them to make the movie, no, uh, they're in dire financial straits. It's had catastrophic losses in 2022. Reporting on the last quarter, they announced that they lost 2.1 billion, and this only looks good because in previous quarters they lost 3.4 billion and 2.3. Obviously every product wants to make money, but there is an element of, I just just want a low-hanging fruit cash grab, which doesn't exactly inspire confidence in a trilogy. <laughs> but maybe they could get the right people involved, maybe Jackson could come back and start working on the movie, maybe everyone involved could have the best of intentions to make a quality product for the customer. My question is, do you think they even know what that is anymore? Do you think that if they did get Peter Jackson involved, he'd even be allowed to make something like he did in 2001? Because I think we can prove 
that if he wanted to try, he'd have an uphill battle, to the point of it being literally impossible within Warner Brothers at the moment, as we've got a great analogue to Lord of the Rings and the effect that that has on a franchise over time. Because Fellowship of the Ring was released in 10th of December 2001, and the Harry Potter film was released a month before. These were two films that were made at the same time. They were brought up within the same culture, and they had a lot of the same problems in production, even being made and staying true to the source material that they were working from. We should honour Tolkien by putting his messages into it. Because it doesn't just matter of the intent of the creator, it matters on what the entire industry around them is trying to force on them, and how much they can fight the fight. Because the Harry Potter films had a British-only rule. They say it's no real surprise given the story is set in England, but it is surprising that J.K. Rowling had a mandate to ensure that this was the case. Now my question is why? Why is it unusual that if you set something in Britain and want it to feel British, then there's actually a rule that it should be full of British people? Not only should this not be surprising, it should be common sense that you have this rule. And yet JK Rowling had to battle to make her universe even feel like her universe, because there were so many other people that wanted to change it from her. She had to defeat attempts at Hollywoodization, because Hollywood doesn't understand what an adaptation is, it doesn't even understand what a universe is, and why it needs to feel a certain way. Because it's not just actors lying on screen, there's something deeper than that, the whole that it creates. The image in your mind or the feeling of something. And something isn't going to feel British, unless it's got British people in it. If you ask an American to do an English accent, the accent that they generally do, is Dick Van Dyke. A guy who isn't even British in the first place. That's why all the accents sound like bad, fake British accents. Because that's what Dick Van Dyke was doing. Whenever anybody comes on the show who's from the United Kingdom, I say, hello, governor, I want <laughs> And I said, I learned that from Dick Van Dyke. I mean, it was the worst Cockney accent ever done. Despite the best of intentions, if you want an authentic adaptation, if you want an authentic world that feels innately correct to the audience, then you must have people who authentically fill the roles they're supposed to be filling. The original Harry Potter had that. The original Lord of the Rings movies had that. Do you think they could do that now? And do you think that Hollywood, not only a group of people that don't want to do that, but a group which actively attacks and insults anyone that does want a genuine adaptation, that does want you to respect the law, how can they ever appreciate a story or a world? How can they ever make a quality adaptation? when they don't even understand the foundational principles which are required in order to make one in the first place. These are people who want to make adaptations and yet don't value what is required to adapt something. Of course, this was still the case in 2001. Now, Rowling was pretty savvy and managed to get some guarantees which provided a more control than a lot of people would have done. Because she didn't have control over the details, that is what they bought but she was open and blunt about what she would like to see and what she wouldn't. They bought control, but Rowling still managed to have impressive amount of influence over the movie. And she did that through rules like keeping it culturally British. It would be very hard to make Hogwarts not feel culturally British, and you filled it full of British people. But it's very easy not to if you do it the other way around. Like you had Steven Spielberg, who was going to cast Haley Joel Osment in it, who even said at one point that he'll start working on his accent, just like Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, a Warner Brothers executive said about Spielberg that it wasn't going to be his vision. It would have had to have been a shared vision, and Spielberg had a fanciful approach, whereas Rowling wanted him to be true to the book. He would have had to have portray her vision and not his. Remind you of anyone very similar to Peter Jackson, and the exact opposite of Rings of Power. Make sure that what he cared about ends up in the movie. Where it only felt natural to us that it would reflect what the world actually looks like, because they weren't interested in Tolkien's work, in Tolkien's vision. It was all about theirs. It was their ego that took precedence over the authors himself. Because as time has gone on, Hollywood has just grown even more egotistical. Everything is about them, their ego, their vision, their creativity. We had George R.R. R. Martin who said something similar recently as well. You would go insane if you didn't change it. How has everything become so toxic? Tolkien fans hate rings of power. What the hell? Maybe it's because it's changing. It's to be part of a redress of balance is an honor. We have all new characters on this couch today, I think. We don't know who you guys are playing at all. The opportunity to interpret and reinterpret it. And words mean something different, rediscovering things. We we're creating something new. You have an opportunity to fill in the gaps and to find, make your own decisions. But as a writer, it, you'd go crazy if you didn't change it somehow. This represents an acknowledgement of where we have been and a will to get to where we need to be. A, a lot of us are firsts. I don't understand how people can come to hate something that they once loved. Every woman on the show, such agency. We don't serve the men around us. I'm getting chills. I'm literally getting chills and staring at me. This profession is a gambler's profession. First ever female dwarf to ever truly be seen cinematically. If you don't like your show, don't watch 
watch it. But it's not as if J.K. Rowling didn't have to fight for this, even back in 2001. During the casting, she would actually call people up with rumours that an American had been cast as Harry to make sure that that wasn't the case. And someone reportedly quit over the idea that they couldn't cast who they wanted rather than just British people. If you have to quit a role because you can't directly cast someone that contradicts the original law, the Mad Goose Wizard, I think the problem is with you. And yet even in 2001, the people didn't respect that. It was all about my vision, what I want. I think an American will be better for this British role. Rowling had a rule that only British people could be cast. So you have to ask why an American casting director came on board to extend the search stateside. His entire job was literally pointless because she'd already said that none of them could be hired, and they tried to force it in anyway. She can say as much as she wants that ultimately it's the director's point of view and vision. But when they turned down Robin Williams, he said there was a ban on American actors, but he said maybe one day if they go to America, maybe I'll be able to do it then. Might explain some reasons for the later settings, eh? But JK Rowling herself in an interview said to keep it all British, it has been a hell of an achievement because that's not necessarily the way it would have gone. It was a hell of an achievement because it was difficult, because she had to fight every step of the way to keep it that way, to maintain her vision, to maintain her universe as her actual universe. She only wanted the law to be respected, and that was a massive challenge, even back in 2001. If we assume that Peter Jackson had similar challenges to keep the world of Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings, to maintain the integrity of the universe. Then he will also have had to fight other people trying to cast actors that just didn't fit in the world. Actors that would have made the world innately feel different than how it was meant to, how it was intended by the author. And all of this was in 2001. Do you think he'd put up the same fight now? Do you think people would allow him that power without overruling him now? given that the weight against him would be so much stronger than it was back then. Because J.K. Rowling didn't. Because we've seen the direction that it went with the Harry Potter universe, where we started to expand it to other places in the world, so that other actors would actually fit within the universe. We can maintain the integrity of the universe, we've just got to set it in a different location. Peter Jackson could definitely do that within Tolkien. They could choose to tell a story in a part of the world where that would all make sense and still maintain the integrity of the universe. But now you're choosing the story and the environment and the setting based off people's physical characteristics. You're not doing it because it's the best movie or the best story to tell. You're doing it because you've been handcuffed, because your creativity has been stunted, because you've got to find a loophole to jump through to both satiate the lunatics in charge, while also desperately trying to make something good that feels like Lord of the Rings. Something that feels like Tolkien. And that's all best case scenario if you get Peter Jackson, if you even get someone who feels that way in the first place because we all know where it lands if you don't. You end up with Hollywood riding roughshod over the creator's intentions. It's to be part of a redress of balance is an honour. You end up with people who don't care about Tolkien's universe at all. They care more about reflecting what the world actually looks like. Our world. And if you think Warner Brothers wouldn't do that, Warner Brothers made the original movies, they can do it again. Well, they also made Velma. And we've got this page from Warner Media, where they state they are committed to this as a moral and business imperative. It is essential that our content reflect society and the world around us. They mean in California. Because when Harry Potter tried to reflect an English location with English people, suddenly that was a massive problem. We needed foreign casting directors. Most people would say that Tolkien's world should reflect Tolkien's world, but apparently no, it's got to reflect California. We must ensure that we include a load of other people, not based on talent, but on their physical characteristics. And we will hold our employees accountable through specific processes. Oh, and this is the same company which held various different talks to confront injustice and had D'Angelo along to talk about how great it is that she's a discriminatory bigot. We live in a different world than we did in 2001, and there's far different pressures put on people now than there was in 2001 as well. I don't think that the Lord of the Rings trilogy could even be made today. I don't believe that even if you got all of the same people responsible for all of those decisions together to make that film now, they would even be allowed to make it. The fight that JK Rowling went through just to have English people put in an English school alone decades ago wouldn't even be allowed now. Which is why now her movies have changed to be international so that they can meet what they need to while also fitting within the world. Yes, you can change the setting of a story to meet that, but now you're making your movies based off the ideas of some executive in the company, someone who's been given power in a department that didn't even exist in 2001. These decisions aren't made because it leads to the best quality of entertainment. They're made because somebody in a room thinks that you should do it. They're made because someone in a room thinks it's a problem if you don't. And it's not designed to solve a problem, because if they solved all of the problems that they say exist, suddenly they'd be out with the job. 
It's their job to put roadblocks in the way of creatives. It's their job to make problems with other company so they can continue to get paid. These are people which actively make entertainment worse. And that's exactly what they've been hired to do. <laughs> with that, is it any wonder that the quality of entertainment has decreased? Is it any wonder that you end up with Velma? Do you think in this world, surrounded by people who don't even understand the advantages of authenticity, the people who can't even understand that a world needs to be full of people that fit the roles in order to feel like that world in the first place, people that don't value a specific cultural creation, people that think some grey, unspecified cultural mess is actually an advantage, they will never be able to replicate Tolkien's universe because they don't don't appreciate the value in it in the first place. And I'm not saying that Peter Jackson doesn't, I'm not saying that Warner Brothers couldn't hire people that do, whether they'd be able to win the fight against the other powers within their company to even create what they want to, where they can both create with the handcuffs on and jump through the loopholes to different settings within Lord of the Rings so they can simultaneously tell a good story and fulfill the desires of the other powers, even if they manage all of it, it's going to take time and effort. They're going to need to fight and create something different than they actually wanted to, different than they would have done. Going to distract from the only thing that matters, making quality, entertaining movies in the Lord of the Rings universe. And that's why I'm less interested in specific individuals being hired on a production, and more on the fact that an entire wave of thinking within Hollywood needs to change. Because until we do that, we can't return to the values that actually matter. And movies like the original Lord of the Rings trilogy will never be able to be made again. So I'm not saying these movies couldn't be good, but I think it's an uphill battle, and we'll never be able to contend with movies that we used to be able to make regularly. But those are just my thoughts, what are yours? Let me know down in the comments below, like the video if you like the video, subscribe, more videos like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye